Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. And together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Mate, another box, this time Flames of War. Now, this is interesting. This is, this is German. much anticipated. It's German. Everybody likes the German, German. army. Everybody's got a German army. In fact. Uh, so this is the new starter army, the heavy tank hunter camp group for very late war. This is like... Northwest Europe. Yeah. This is the stuff from the bulge. Now, this release is much bigger than the contents of this box. This box is this box is only part of. There are many other new. Videos. So there's no King Tigers in here. Mm. But there is a plastic King Tiger. On the on the way. On the way. In oh. fact, oh. no, you haven't. Have you got one? I've got one because it's Wave Seven World of Tanks. The miniatures game has got one. I'll get you get you a picture of that. Um, in, in this video, I'll take it out and we can have a look at it. Um, but yeah, that. But there's also um, one of the 251 or 250, 251 half tracks with anti aircraft weapons in plastic as well. There's, there's, there's some other new interesting stuff. Extra but anyway, bits. that's not what these guys are here for. They want to know what's in this box, mate. So, <laughs> shall I have an open of it and you tell Please them what's in it? Please do. So, this is a beast. A uh, heavy tank hunter camcrawled! Yeah. Uh, right, so inside you get three Jagdpanther 8.8 centimeter tank hunters, and they are beautiful. Uh, two <laughs> Hornies 8.8 centimeter yeah. tank hunters. Yeah. Uh, two Oswin 3.7 centimeter tanks. They look to be. Are they flak? I thought they were flak. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm. Okay. They look like the they've got the a shooty gun. A proper shooty gun. They've got a, they've got a single 37mm yeah. rather than a, pet, a load of 20 mils. Yeah. That's good, right. Uh, you get one armoured panzer grenadier platoon. You do. Uh, four SD KFC 251 half tracks. Three panzer fours with a 7.5. Uh, three Hummel SP guns, 15 centimetre SP guns, which is cool. Two Puma 5 centimetre armoured cars. Plus, you get your rule book and everything else you can expect in one of these epic boxes. Oh. That is a mountain of plastic, sir. That, sir, uh, is a Again. mountain of plastic. You can't complain of that. You really can't. All right, uh, just do a little bit of sorting out here while John gets his box open as well. Oh my, three hours later, we have sorted through <laughs> all of the plastics. We've sorted through all of the plastics. Right, so uh, what, we'll, what we'll do, John, if it's all right with you, is I'll just talk briefly about the paper. Yes, certainly. And things, and then we will move on. So, uh, German Flames of War start here, fold out, and oh, this one is, they're getting bigger, Whoa, look. It's, it's, like gone, a... it's gone to four. Whoa. So, essentially, what this is, is, um, it is, it is what it says on the tin. It's got you it's build instructions, um, say this in every video, sometimes the kits you've got will build more versions than it's giving you instructions for here. Yeah. Gives you instructions for the army it's directing you to build. If you get onto their website, check out, find the product, look at the spotlight, and you'll get all the information you need. Um, you also get in here things about um, expanding it later. There is more to this range. So there's a lot of good stuff in here, but uh, that's that. You also get rule book, unit cards, and decal sheets. I should have, because uh, there's not enough space on the table. John has the elected not. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I've could, just stolen could one of each of yours. A jumble of yellow. Oh, so much. So uh, the decal sheet. We only get two. One is this generic two German sheets, numbers, yes. and this one is specific. for specific Panzer divisions. Okay. So it's got the Hermann Goering Panzer division, and it's got 116, which is a Greyhound division, and 17, and a number of Balkan crosses. Wow. You also got your yeah, rule book. So Bulge is a bigger release than just this box. There are many other formations in here, and they do give you a card, this card, which I always forget oh. to mention, yeah. um, which is your movement orders and your support options, uh, but also telling you those headline formations. The one that it is advising you to build and it's providing cards for here, is the Jagdpanther Tank Hunter HQ. <laughs> so the Jagdpanther HQ, you take one or two Jagdpanthers for 12 or 24 points. In the HQ, you then have one or two 
the Ag Panther platoons. You then have one other Tank Hunter platoon, which could be Stug's Hornies, which yeah. we've got in here, or Panzer 4L70s. And you can also have the Werbelwind or the Ostwind AA platoon. So those are the integral formations. So if this is all you've got and you've started, you're definitely going to need to make the Hornies anti-tank version because that's a dual kit that will build your self-propelled artillery oh. or, or self-propelled anti-tank. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you're going to have out of this kit, you're going to have a headquarters, one Jagdpanther platoon, and then one platoon of the Hornies, then your verbal vins or Ostvins. Mm. All right. So the Jagdpanther then, mate, which... So, boom. Boom. El so, Spruo, so, or two of... Yeah, has this one got a date on it? It it's, most probably does. It's somewhere. In the light. It is tiny. It is 2015. 2015. Yeah. Panther was one of their really early ones. And I think it starts with this. So you get this. And this. Is this also 2015? No, this is 2012. Oh, wow. So I think this sprue replaced resin and metal parts. Okay. Um, for, for all the kits. Um, and so there's quite a few options on here. Um, and one of the features of this particular sprue, which is quite frustrating, is it's the machine guns. The the whole machine gun. Oh, that is interesting placements for the sprue gate. You are... You I have really snapped a million there. of these. Look at that. And Two I'll, points for the barrel. And not only that, these two are actually different. Oh, one of the... them's got Zimmerit on, yeah. and it's for a different Panther stroke, Yag Panther. Zimmerit? Not Zimmerit. So yeah. if you break it, you're done. Well, you're just going to have to put the other one in and, and, and hope for the rest. But be super, super careful with that. Um, always good when you've got something difficult is to is to cut away other areas of the sprue that you're not using so it's yeah. not under tension. Can you, it's yeah, got a little cut bit of out give. the little, the big nubbins rather. Yeah, cut, cut round it, cut above it. Thinking, dancing. Yeah, yeah. yes mate. Absolutely. Um, to just try and ease the tension on it a little bit and then get a really sharp uh, blade. No, don't try and cut that out with clippers. No, that's it's not. It's not going to end fail. well. It's not going to end well. Um, so yeah, this kit actually came out quite a long time ago. I remember I got some of these in World of Tanks, which is why I do actually have a model. Ah, in the in the original, not World of Tanks, but Tanks, the World War II skirmish game. Um, this was this was the um, German vehicle, and you could build it either as a Panther or a Jag Panther. And I bought quite a few of the starter sets because I've got it kids at school, so it's been around for a while. And it's a slightly different Panther to the Panther that came out with D Day. There's three different versions of D, A, and G. Right. I think this is the latest one. This is the G, I think. But it might it might be the A. I, I, I really don't know which is which. But the key difference between this and the other model um, that's really striking is the Normandy one has got Zimmerit. Zimmerit is an anti-magnetic uh, coating that they put over yeah. them. It's set up with, with magnetic anti-tank mines. Yeah. And things like that. Magnetic mines, in particular. Like paste. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in the way that cement is like paste. Yeah. It, it's not like liquid, liquid, yeah. liquid um, foam on it. Um, and I think it was, it, was, it was both expensive, time-consuming, and not hugely reliable. So the later versions are not doing it. There's even accounts of some of these, not so much at the bulge because they're prepared for it, but certainly in early 45, of them just having the... Um, the 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 red paint from the factory. Oh right, just did that help? Did it? <laughs> well, just they just didn't have time to paint. Oh. The factories were going to be overrun, so just kick them as, out as, in the yeah. upside red. In 1945, we're fighting in Germany. Yeah, and you know if if you if you if they're knocking at the Hello? door, so well, this one's not ready to go, mate. It's uh, not painted it's yet. It's got a gun. Yeah, does yeah. the engine run? Yes. Okay, mm, we're maybe. going. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so apparently, yeah, the same kit. Now, you only get the one lower hole, you do get the two upper holes, and Yag Panther, which is what we're building here, doesn't require a turret peg. So I believe oh, it's got the big... if you if you really wanted to, 
you could have the two upper holes separate. Yeah, I could see that being I believe. an option. But as I said, to, for this particular force, you're intending to build Yag Panther. And why would you build Yag Panther well? Because it's a beast. Because it's a beast. <laughs> um, so Yag Panther has got a 8.8 centimetre gun, which has got a 48 inch range, halted rate of fire of two, moving Ooh. one. Pretty much like all tanks in that yep. respect. Anti tank power of 17, firepower of three up. It's careful hit on a four, and it's got front armor of nine, which That's means the Shermans man. can't hurt it at all. Yeah, I mean, when you compare it to Team Yankee, mm. it's it's nothing. But in this war, oh this war, 17 front armor, That's the 17 like, anti tank power is huge. Can you even stop and front that? armor of nine is pretty solid. Yep. Um, in terms of special rules, she's just got forward firing and stormtroopers. But forward firing isn't as limiting. It as... really isn't. No. It really isn't. Um, it might well be on a really, really big and very square table yeah. or certain deployments. And the reality of tank destroyers is they were really limited in what they could do because of the inability to quickly transverse. Mm. Traverse. They were ambush vehicles. Yeah. And they were very good at that. But you couldn't attack with them. But in, fl in, in Flames of War, if this is your tank, this is the front of it, anything... It's like 180. Here, yeah. 180 degrees from the front, is a viable target. And that's to say that you don't have to micro and, yeah. the movement of it. I do wonder, though, whether there is a thing about turning turrets to face in Flames of War. Oh, I wonder, does that count? I wonder whether, you, turn a, the whole whether you have to turn the tank to face the target. Perhaps that's the... And that might expose your side armour. That's the downside, maybe. Yeah. Um... So that's that. Stat-wise, uh, Yag Panther is confident, but it's got low self-propel, uh, low counter-attack. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem, and it's veteran, but it's got low assault numbers. All of the kind of self-propelled artillery tank destroyers have got weaker numbers in close combat. That's, that's standard. Fair, yeah. Protected three up. This is a solid vehicle, um, and at twelve points though, in a hundred-point game, you can still take a few of them. You can still do it. You know, I mean, just for the sheer scariness of the vehicle itself, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrifying. Um, and just looking at the actual platoon, then. So that was the headquarters, which you can take one, one or two off. The actual platoon, you can take two, three, or four off. Now, in this, you only box, get three in here. You only get three, so you have minimum strength here. You're getting two in the platoon, one in there, and there's still twelve points of vehicle. Twenty-four, thirty-seven, forty-nine. So it's actually twelve points something. Um, yeah. Solid, solid, powerful vehicle. Um, I don't know. I don't know really what else there is to say about it. Mate. No, it's terrifying. If you really wanted to, in terms of the kit, though, you can build this as a the panther. Panther, yeah. You can build it as a panther. You're not got a card for it in here, but if you played games of Flames of War for a while, um, then you probably will have some already. So that was Yag Panther. She'd been out for a while, but because Flames of War have been releasing their box sets and their platoon boxes from where they are, there wasn't an army book to go with it, so Yag Panther's not been available. Even though they, pl these plastic sprues yeah. have been out for ages. For forever. Because they restarted the edition and are redoing their rule books. So now we're getting very, very close to the point where um, there isn't anything that we'd seen before that isn't currently available. Although... We're getting getting towards that. Mm. Um, that that has been a bit of a bit of a point for some people. So, what do you want next, John? Boo! Um, let's go for let's get the Panzer IV out of the way. The staple diet of the regular Panzer IV late Panzer IV. Yeah. Uh, what did you call it? An L seventy? No, no. That was an option in that, that was an formation. option in the formation. So in this, this is going to be a support platoon. It says it. Yeah. You're going to take this as a pop, as a pop zone. This has not got the L70 gun. This has got the, the standard 75 and it's maybe L42. I'm not sure. Um, this, the, the, these things were in there at some point. Oh, mate, know, there's so many little variants. Then. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. See, this is your standard late war Panzer IV. This does have, um, I think, a Zimmerit paste on the facings. It. If you look at the upper oh. hole... At the side, at the fr at the it front. It does on the, that bit of the yeah. track. It looks like yeah, it, or and is that and just and like at the front here, at the front of the upper hole? 
Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. and the rear. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. it now. Um, so this this kit is a lovely kit. I've built quite a few of these. Um, these it it just all slots into place nicely. And whenever you get this as a design philosophy, this upper hull is a bit of a gamble. Because normally you show the underside. Sorry, you showed the underneath of my my one of my tanks. Yeah. Um, because of the way this upper hull is molded, mm. often kits would have you build that box. They give you really? the four sides and then the top. Whoa, to hell with that. Yeah, well, in here it's all moulded in one Good. And, <laughs> and it does fit very snugly into this. Um, you've got the skirts because it is a very late one. It's it's a it's a G or an H, something like that, those those kind of things. Um, and like a, like a lot of their kits, the tracks, the running gear, they're all a single piece. The cupolas have even got a key. They're pegged. So that they point the right way. They're keyed. That's yeah, beautiful. It's nice. I like to see that the um, skirt supports are moulded on. Yes. No yes. fiddling with that. Yeah, and they're, and they're pretty solid. Yeah, um, they look Because these are, you know, flames of war. Uh, uh, the, more that they, the more of it that they make, the more... They, they make great war gamers kits. They're not model kits. They're easy to build. And they've removed the simpler... The most complex piece of this kit from memory was um was the way that the the there's a little bow machine gun and that is a small piece which i can't even see there. scanning Sc yeah. oh it's up with the capolas so with this with this one again when you've got these small pieces to remove what you want to do is you want to remove the end of the barrel first with a sharp knife because i've done a lot of these yeah yeah there's and not as many gates on this one as no, we saw. And it's the... and it's much it's much lighter. Yep. Yeah. You've got uh, spare bits of track on there. It's a it's a nice little kit. Um there's only three of them in here, even if you've already got some, if you've got to hit the beach yeah. set or something, it's it's another three. Until you've got ten or fifteen Panzer fours, you haven't got the maximum number you could use. Yeah. So it's good to see them in there. Lovely little kit. So that's Panzer Four. It's okay. going to be a support option there. The Panzer Four L seventy is a funny one because just because you mentioned yeah. it, yeah, that came out in the previous army box. If you remember, it it's a it looks quite a bit like Yag Panther. It's got a very kind of forty five degree front. It doesn't look like a tank. Oh. It looks like a tank destroyer, and I'm not oh. sure why. So there's already a Stug Four, which is different. Yeah. Um. So uh, it, it's what most people would call it a Yag Panther. But in, in, in Flames of War, and a lot of people know it's the Panzer IV L70. Well, but I'm it's never. a tank destroyer, not it a tank. It is a completely different profile, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very different looking vehicle. Okay, next up, let's have a little look at the half tracks. Have a look at the half Why tracks. Why not? So this is the 251. This is the bigger of the half tracks. This kit is, again, one of their earlier ones. You can see the sprue gates are just a little bit stronger. Yes. Um, this is the... Ooh, 2013, sir. Yeah. This is the D version. I think. Okay. The so D. there are, in terms of the half tracks, A, B, C, D, C, the di C and D are different in the how the back is sloped. Oh. So on the, on the do you know, you know the, the back and the sides? Yeah. On the C, they taper back in towards the top, and on the D, they just go straight up. Okay. To a greater extent. So um, this bit here, the, the back of it... Yep. On the C comes in again. Again? Yeah, it, it angles, instead of angling out, it angles in Ooh. just for that top part. All right. Yeah. Um, so, again, what uh, many of the protagonists during the war, as well as developing new equipment and new things, they were also looking at ways to simplify things in terms speed of manufacturing up. to speed it up. Yeah. 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 You, you, that would be called making it cheaper. Now, this does describe itself as a 251. Um, and it does have, but it does have the um, little, I forget which pack it is, the 37mm anti-tank gun, which is the... Oh, this thing. The command, uh, yeah. So one in five or whatever have got that, the, the platoon commander's vehicle. I'm just wondering, 251 half a... track. It does not. Interestingly, on... On this card for the half track, it doesn't give you the stats for the 3.7 centimeter. It does give you the stats for the two centimeter AA version, which this kit cannot build. But then, I mean, the, the, they've only printed so many cards. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. Um, 
So I'm not sure whether you have the option. No, so in this, you can replace one with, with the two centimeter, but that's, that's not that gun. So you need, they have made another plastic kit. Okay. So you would need to get those. Those guns are not always even, even a side grade. They're often just a downgrade because it's such terrible anti-tank. For what it is, potential. Yeah, no point. No, because machine guns are really good at doing what they do, which is shooting infantry that are not in like fox Running holes. across, yeah. Yeah, as soon as they move. So, have um, so, yeah. But you've also got on here these parts across the top and bottom. Mm. What's that all about? That is, um, that's for making pontoon bridges. So there's an engineering oh. version of this vehicle. And these are where do they sit on the side. And of the they sit, top? yeah, on, on on the top on the sides. So again, I've not built the engineering version, but clearly that that's what they're for. And I'm sure if you go onto their website, it will it's it's going to show you. Oh wow! But curiously, you've also got an entire other set of tracks on a wheel. Oh, how did I not even? So hang on, what's what then? This one's got some of the hull or a hull part integral to it and this one's just little tracks yeah interesting i don't understand so I, I don't i don't know me either unless no i mean i don't i don't think definitely a, but it's a very very early sprue so it may make more sense to people it may be that you this is it and this is for converting a resin one yeah yeah, yeah. and they just ship them out together yep I, I don't know. Yeah. Because it is from a while ago. Um, okay. I haven't built these. I built the 251s, the, the smaller ones, um, and they went together really nicely. And you can see, like a lot of their kits, there's keying on here. It's quite clever the way that these things slot in to this, that this lower hole. That evolved almost with every kit, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Their keying process. Yeah. Um, and again, for, for a rookie modeler like me, keying really solid mm. um, the half track stats they're, they're what you would expect really it's got 10 inch tactical move 16 inch cross country 28 road dash and three up cross careful four plus but it's got machine guns four dice halted or moving whoa so what these sort? are okay with the front armor of one and the Meep. side and rear of one Meep. it's not going to protect you against anything other than bullets which right? is fine yeah which is which is fine you can advance upon infantry Fox. with these things <laughs> or you can move around a board fast yeah, for sure and I like that and you can also carry one or two teams of infantry very cool. nice we'll talk about the infantry as uh, uh, once we finish with the vehicle yes indeed hang on let me think about what i'm gonna look at next what do you want next john okay mate let's have a look at the only because a made one is staring at me the puma the puma these are cool okay so this is i think sdk said two three four Every German vehicle has got an SDK All of those number. things, yeah, man. I don't know what they are. Uh, you get a pair of Pumas in here, um, which the kit will build. This kit, I think, looking at it, yeah, it'll build a range of different vehicles based built on that chassis. This is a 2016 Spro. Yes. 2016. 2016. So the Puma, which is record, and it's a bit of a Wargamer's favourite, the Puma, because it's basically a tank on an armoured car hole, because it's, it's got a big gun. It's got a high velocity five centimetre gun, which has got uh, anti tank power of nine, firepower of four. But it's a car. <laughs> but it's a car, <laughs> yeah. So it's tactical move is 12, uh, 10, terrain dash 12, cross country dash 18, but road dash 36. So you're going to bring in an off table from reserves, but of course, you, you have armoured cars for the Scout and Stormtrooper role. For the Scout yeah. role, um, sorry, you want them Scout on the front. and Spearhead role. Yeah. You want them up front. Yeah. It's got, um, it's got eight wheels, didn't you know? Yes. Um, we So, with these eight-wheel armoured cars, when they, we started to encounter them in the, in the desert, and people were really like, this, these German armoured yeah, cars are amazing. It's an eight-wheeler. It's an incredibly sophisticated piece of gear, these eight-wheelers. It's got two driving positions, front and back, and it can steer in either direction. Hans, we need to get out! <laughs> but what that meant is in Reichsmarks, it costs nearly as much as a Panzer IV to make one. Right. 
That's all, yeah. Because it, it, it comes from those kind of earlier design specs when the German army is at war. Idea. Yeah, before Let's, they hit the real combat. Yeah, these things... The Puma is a fantastically expensive bit of gear. It was only issued to a couple of divisions, I think. Really? And so there's a few hundred ever made. Um, yeah, but this this Sprout, so as I say, you've got one that I painted there for, for yes, winter. Yes, look at that. Me, me. Um, you don't have to do that, of course. Uh, you can paint them in summer colours if you like. But this is going to make you, as well as making you the Puma, the eight-wheeler, and it's worth knowing about the wheels. The wheels are not glued on individually. Ooh. The wheels are, 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 again, keyed. Whenever I build a model where I have to glue on individual wheels, there is always a chance that they're not in line. Yep. And, and they can go <laughs> all, 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 the one, all, all over, over the place. place. This isn't going to happen. That's cool. Because they're, they're, on, they're mounted on sort of bogies. Yep. And they glue, they're, they're keyed big old into there. the hole. And the big keys in the hole. So you can line that up. Nice. But yeah, this will make you your two centimetre version or your um, five centimetre version of the Puma. And actually, the card that you've got does give you the alternative costs. You could oh, build sweet. either one. But I don't know whether the instructions if, does. Yes. But if you want to see all the versions of this eight-wheeled armoured car that this will make, um, again, go to their website, look up the Puma box, and go to the spotlight the thing. Spotlight. To show you a lot of different, lot of different ones. Um, but the two centimetre version... So this is the thing where you're paying points. The two centimetre version is three points rather than four. But the anti-tank power goes from nine down to five. But it is self-defense AA. It's got that um, that interesting kind of grill hatch yeah. that you get on those, which does it it does open up and does allow the 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 weapon to fire at a higher angle. Because it's, it's actually you're not going to see it on this, but it is mounted on a pedestal, almost like a naval gun. Really? Inside there, I think so. Wow! You know the, the actual apparatus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all on like a yeah, yeah. Spinny gimbal doofer. <laughs> yeah, spinny, spinny gimbal doofer. That's the technical uh, term. Is the technical for it. term for uh, certainly for the ones in this type of turret. Right. I'm not sure about the bigger ones. Maybe a bit more fitting into the structure of it. I'm not sure, but I've seen this one. I think I'm pretty sure it's on a it's on a pintle mount. It is a very unique looking vehicle. It is, and it, and it's awesome. Oh, sorry, I was saying, didn't I? So we we were like terrified these German eight wheeled armored cars. Yeah, freaky. Uh, the, but actually, then we captured one. Now look at it. It's like this is it, a it's an armored car with eight wheels. <laughs> really complex and difficult to make. Well, just knowing without that, it's, it's got very similar armament to armored cars. Not the Puma, but like the two centimeter versions yeah. and so forth that we're using in the desert. So it's like. This is just an armored car with eight wheels. This isn't better. It's just it's glue some extra wheels on your. your yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, presumably it was about off-road performance and so forth. I think probably it's important to remember that these vehicles are, 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 are kind of concepts from the 1930s. It's not like everybody drives. Yeah, and it's not like everybody knows what driving is all about. I don't mean that la obviously large numbers of men learnt to drive as part of their army experience. And I'm not saying that, that people, that officers had drivers because they couldn't drive, although that would have been the case in some cases. But that kind of understanding about what can be done with driving and what's the right way to do it. So the it's idea of having a vehicle that can new. move forwards and backwards and so forth, it's, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. It turns out that something like the little Humber or Daimler pig looking armored cars yeah. were a third or a fifth the cost and did the same job. They didn't have all of these sort of technical features yeah. that that has, but, but you didn't need them. just as well. 98% as well. Mm. Yeah. All right, next brew. Interesting. Right then, let's have a look, see, please, at the Ostwind. The Ostwind. Which I... I why it confused me is it's got a single barrel on this picture, the Ostwind, but I'm and more familiar with the Verbalwind. You're more familiar with the Verbalwind, which went... Yeah, right. So this um, this is a, a kind of a multi sprue situation you got going yes. on here because the there's there's two parts to it. The f this bigger part is the early Panzer IV. This is like a Panzer IV oh, yeah. D E F. Those those kind of early ones pre skirts pre spaced armor. Um, this is a full early Panzer IV or really mid noticed. mid Panzer IV yeah. sprue. Um, 
So these, what's happened with these is they've gone back to the factories and they've been repurposed. Some of them have got upgraded to Panzer IV, you know, F2, GH, yeah. but many of them have been put into this anti-aircraft role. You have to remember, this is late 1944. Allied air superiority. We're all over the place. Absolutely dominate. We've reached the point we're not flying air superiority. Don't need to. Our fighters are all carrying rockets and light bombs and just flying around the, the battle space looking for something to shoot at. Wow. Um, because we've got such a preponderance of artillery, uh, of, of, of air power. Um, particularly after you know, the, the raid on the ball bearings factory and big week. What happens is, is we we have a series of big big long range bombing missions into Germany, which are all carefully planned out, and it turns out to be a bit of a mess actually. Really, and we lose a lot of bombers. But what we do at the same time is we pull up most of the German air force and shoot it down. So our losses are pretty Whatever's horrific. Left, but, but the Luftwaffe is then finished as a force in the West. Wow, they just never again can. Recover because it was the kind of targets that they couldn't not defend. Yes, so they, they had to do it. But actually, so two raids were supposed to happen at the same time. One doesn't take off till about six hours later because of weather conditions. They got a landing in Africa rather than coming back to Britain. It, it, it's all a bit logistically of a, goes. Completely. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it doesn't go well. But as part of that same kind of week of of intensive daylight bombing, is we finally finish off. The um, the Luftwaffe in the West. Wow. So anyway, um, that's that's why there's a sudden, there's a great deal of need for self propelled AA because they ain't got the birds to send up. Because they haven't got, the, shoot, got the fighter cover shoot anymore. Us down. Yeah. So certainly. you're saying that this is a core of it is a Panzer. It's four. yeah a mid war Panzer four. Mid war Panzer four. This this is an, this is that's an, the core. Yeah, and and if you didn't for whatever reason you want just, that, that is a mid war Panzer four. That's another sprue. two. If you bought a mid war Panzer four, you get two of them. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Happy days. So the second sprue, which is a twenty twenty sprue, is yes. all of this. So this is quite new. This came out I think with the previous German box, an upgrade sprue, and this is basically just two alternative turrets. Yep. For your Panzer four. Lovely. And. Why, why is this cool? Well, this is not just two alternative turrets. It's both of them. It is both, complete. There's an upper, lower, yep. Yeah. I've not built one of these, so I can't 100% say... Might, might there be a few that, gobbins But that, they've even given you two turret pegs. That would suggest, surely, that you can... Yeah, and so what, what that means is if you've got Panzer IV early's kicking around, but more importantly, you've got the option. You could, build, you could deploy it as either version... And essentially the difference, the one you're getting in here is the Ostwind, which is the one with the 3.7 centimetre, the single gun. Yes. The Verbal Wind has got it's the, got multi, has got the multi 20 mil. So this has got more armour penetrating power, the but a lot less shots. Ostwind, right. Yeah, it's a bigger gun, but a lot less shots. Now, the stats on anti-aircraft fire, as much as in all the movies, you watch Battle of Midway or something, it's all do, 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 oh, yeah. auto cannons. The actual stats on shooting down aircraft say that the bigger the gun, the better, in terms of tons of munitions fired. Is it just the and you need to think about the disturbance itself? Whatever the reasons are. Whatever it is. We know, we know, we've got figures on these things. We know what was shot down broadly by what. At what time? Not all of it, but we've we've got numbers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We've got numbers to work with, um, and overwhelmingly, the in terms of tons of munitions expended, not shots, obviously. But if you were to look at shots, the bigger guns have got a slower rate of fire. It's it's significantly worse yeah. than that. But the kind of lighter caliber, high rate of fire stuff, actually, as as Dangerous as it looks, it just doesn't bring down planes. Make some holes. It might drive them off. It might shoot down earlier planes. Yeah. But by the time you've got some basic armor just need. to protect the pilot, and then you have planes, you talk about armor. It's not like the, the plane isn't armored. It's just the bit that the pilot sits in yeah. might have some armor. Yeah. Some directional. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Munition. Um, um, so what, what are we talking here? Like the, the uh, I think flak. Are we talking that kind of thing? Massive, explosive things, but they were shrapnel predominantly, weren't they? High explosive, fused, fused. Yeah, yeah. But the the, the three point seven is probably fused by this point. Time fused. 
But we've got proximity fuses. I'm not sure the Germans did. Oh. Or if they did, they maybe were later and more expensive and only in the... Yeah. A fine um, amount. But, you know, when, it's, when you start looking at ships and, and, and things like that, there's a lot more data because they know a fixed number of aircraft attacked yeah. and we know exactly what we fired at it yeah. and we know who brought it down. And they have big... Bigger anti-aircraft guns, going fa- guns, you know, going up to five inch, five point two five dual dual purpose guns, which by land standards is a is, is a pretty big gun. Wow. Um, oh, five point five inch big, like fourteen centimeters, something like that. It's a big gun by ground standards, and we know that the stats on it just say bigger guns are better. Why am I saying that? Right, because a three point seven centimeter yeah. flat. There is a reason because this is again a game thing. Probably that three point seven centimeter. Having less shots makes Means. it less good than the alternative, which because is the, the anti-tank dies. power. Yeah, the other one's worse, but neither of them can really do anything to a tank yeah. anywhere. Saying, so, well, the evidence is guns just keep getting bigger. Why do they keep getting bigger? Because bigger is better. Except in this game. <laughs> except, except. Well, games have got to make choices. Sometimes. Oh, of course, of course. But yeah, this is a nice game. It came out in the last one. Really like the fact that this you can have three entirely different tanks. Now you're stretching it a bit using the early Panzer IV in any kind of camouflage scheme that you're going to see these in, because these don't come in till later. It's not that the design is complex; it's that this is about reusing those holes. Yes. It's not about like oh we only come up with this later. It's like we didn't have tanks. Yeah, they spare. were doing other things at the time. Building tanks now to be tanks. We need them. But to now be... we've got tanks that can't be right. upgraded or retrofitted. What can we do? And I think this might have even been, um, you know, like d- done in a factory. Somebody sort of mocked one up, saying, "What about doing this?" Just get some. And, and somebody comes yeah. along and goes, "Yeah, let's make some of them." I mean, yeah. You look at the turret. The design is just some. It's pretty straightforward. It's just some angled metal, yeah. right, with a gun in it. Yeah. Um, Stat-wise, I can't remember if we ever if we said three shots halted, two moving, anti-tank seven. And four up firepower with dedicated A rule. It, dedicated A rule is the main reason you're taking yep. it. But you can take three shots at stationary infantry with a four up firepower. You can Something. shoot at things, that, but even Stuarts and things are going to struggle with only seven anti tank power. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But that's those. Boom. Right then, buddy. Right. This seems to be the thing. The this Hornies is the thing. This is the thing that you get five of in this box. Hornies slash Hommel. Right. So what I'm not able to do is tell you much about the kit because this is brand new. This brand box came in today. Spanking new. It came from the DPD guy upstairs. Cameras on because um, we've been wa- we've been waiting for this. So this, but I have seen from the Battlefront stuff. This kit, although it says 2021, I'm pretty sure that this is its debut. Yes. Again, I think it's yeah. the COVID yeah. thing, right? Um, so this kit is going to build you either the Hornies or the Hummel, and I think it also builds one of the Marder variants, maybe I the mean, Marder Three. It looks like a giant Marder. Yes, yes. Um, but in here, it's ho- it's Hornies and Hummel. So what this is, and this is just what I was saying before, right? This. Is this a repurposed hull of something else? It is a Panzer IV. But it's not repurposed. It's sort of like retooled at the factory. Because if you compare it, compare the tracks on this to the one on the Panzer IV, it is a little bit longer, but you'll see it's the same pattern, same number of wheels. There's just a bit of a space between a couple of them. So they've lengthened the hull a little bit. That's not a that's not a manufacturing error between these sprues. It's that's like, just that was an actual did. design. So I don't think these are repurposed holes. I think these are factories that no longer have a purpose. Right, repurposed factories. <laughs> yeah, it's not an old tank. It's we're tooled up to make this type of tank. Said, well, if you make it two foot longer and we'll put an entirely different structure on top of it. Boom. So stop building the turrets. So again, it's about continuing to use part of existing production. Is lengthening it a little bit, obviously added some capability. So we'll look at the stats of these because oh these are two things. Now, for this particular um, army in here, you're going to need to build these as horn- uh, hornies to fill out your mandatory platoons. All right? So you can take two, three, or four of them at 16, 24, or 32 points. 
It's got two front armor, mate. Okay, fair enough. And that's being generous. Yeah. Because there's, I don't know, half an inch of boilerplate is what that structure on top is. It's a, it's a, it's a blast shield. It's bulletproof. It's providing a bit of concealment, but it isn't armor. It's not, yeah. Wow. Careful, four plus. Your motivation is fearless, mate. Really? And the skill is veteran. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So these... I'd be fearless with a gun that now, big. I think, yeah, yeah, because the gun... Is another 8.8 .8 centimeter gun, or holy rate fire two, moving one, 17 anti tank power. So this is about, you know, they they knew that that 8.8 .8 centimeter gun, the Flak 88, was, the was, was, was a work. This is the winner. And they knew that in 1937. Yes. But as they built more and more and more and more and more and more, and more of them, it was like, it yeah, all right. Evident. So you're looking for increasingly, <laughs> what, what, what can we mount this on? Because it's big. So this is this is what they've come up with. So why would you take this over Jagdpanther? Because Jagdpanther's obviously got the armor, got some armor but it's yeah. got the same gun. Points. The difference is these are eight points a model because there's no armor on them. Opposed to twelve, and these are twelve points a model. Okay, same boom, less armor. Same chassis will also build you the Hummel. So the Hummel is the self-propelled artillery battery. Mm. Um, and in here it's recommending you build three of them for this list. Um, but this is, so this is a 15 a centimeter. Yeah. You had them, um, the, is it the Vespa? There are versions of the lighter um, standard howitzer. The artillery battalions in a, in a German infantry division, there's a number of 105s okay. and then some 150s. Right. I think it's three light, three medium batteries and one heavy or something. So this is, this is nice to see this one having come out. It comes at um, three or six gun battery at 12 or 24 points. But being a um, uh, 150 mil gun, mm. it's got the brutal keyword, yep. which is always nice. Automatic firepower checks. And anti-tank power of 11. That's pretty good. Direct fire. That's going to stay pretty good. right. Just yep. shake you apart. <laughs> As artillery... It's still got an anti-tank firepower, an anti-tank rating of three and a firepower of two up. The anti-tank rating of three, most armoured vehicles have on got a top, top armour of one or zero. So you've still got a respectable chance. Um, top armour, I'm just going to look for Jagdpanther. Yeah. Jagdpanther's still got top armour of one. I mean... So if you hit it with artillery, it, on a one, you might destroy it. On a two, you might bail it. Uh, on, a, on a three or better, it's it's, it's past its check. These Hummels check. seem pretty cool. They are, but you are paying points for them. 12 and 24 points for three oh, and six. Oh, yeah. You know, um, and they are super fragile. Uh, compared to an infantry team, or, you know, a field gun Just would have a four-up save yeah. or a three-up infantry Certainly save. More durable. This thing hasn't got that. It's got armor two. So if it gets shot at, it's going to die. But I, what I like, and I found in Team Yankee, artillery, self propelled artillery in the late game can turn out to be quite useful. Having that ability to, to drive into a position because you're running out of units yeah. and still having some decent anti tank power, power yeah. when the number of shots available in the game is reduced. You know, obviously, you don't want it exposed in the, in the early game. Ideally, not. No. Um, but of course, that is what you're going to have to do with the Hornies. I'm just wondering, has it got tank unit stormtroopers? I'm just checking to see if it had any kind of like rule that allowed it to hide and sneak and peek. It doesn't. It's got the stormtrooper rule, which means you can blitz out of cover, take a shot, and then uh, move. Uh, and then do the sneak and peek move, whatever it's called, that gets yeah. you back into cover. You okay. Can, you can so do option, that. But you are relying on a dodge. But you're relying on two skill checks there. Yeah, um, and but you got a skill of three plus. You might make it. Um, Numbers are odds are you'll fail one of those. Yeah, and then you then you're languishing out there with a eight point vehicle that's got no armor <laughs> and no cover. Interesting. Um, but as as kits, I mean, just looking at it, it's got all the hallmarks of uh, a, a modern battlefront I mean, kit. Yeah, the keying on the hull got a different number of keying points on one side to the other, so you can't put the tracks on the wrong way around. The uh, the drive wheel a little bit at the right end. Um, yeah. The two different, the, the upper body is built differently on the two. It looks very similar if you just glance at the picture, 
but um, the the um, 8.8 centimeters have got a very different mantlet and so forth. Um, and you can just see, but you look at these; these are huge guns. But they're ridiculous size guns. Look, there you go. There's there's a yeah. humor for scale. Yeah. It's bigger. This might um, be an even longer 8.8 centimeter. But frankly, numbers of 17 and above in this game they're meaninglessly <laughs> big. Is it the same gun? It looks to be the same gun. Looks to be the same gun. Like, yeah. If you if you slot that into that. That makes sense. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so that's those. If you wanted to, no. To make to make best use of this, then the Hornies, you can only take up to four of those, mm. and the Hummel is either three or six. So it's either or then, really. So it's an either or choice. Spare. In terms in terms of what you do with just this box, worth. Worth having a thing a, a, yeah. and a bit of a plan about that because I don't. When you've already got artillery, I've got foot. I've got foot artillery. I don't know whether I need those. Do you need to sink that amount of points Do into I need to three? That? I mean, they can move. That's good, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're that much more expensive than than, than the than artillery, and it is a the... bigger gun than the hundred and fives that I've got. But it's an interesting one for you to think about if you want to yeah, take yeah, that bigger sure. Hornets platoon. Do it. Um, the, where was the bit of paper? It does say how many points it is. We got uh, we got a few more things to look at. We got the yes, the last bit. But let's just see because it does give you a star army. Yep. Yeah, so this one comes out at ninety seven points. It's pretty solid. Um, yeah, the uh, the army that we discussed, mm. including the one thing that we've not talked about yet. Yes, the infantry. Indeed, that's all your vehicles. But it's down to the bros on the ground. So we're getting we're getting down to the to the last bit here. This I, I like I like this. We're talking about infantry. the infantry and sprues of men. So they seem to be very plastic. These are so we were told we were told as part of this release we've seen some previews of some winter Volts Grenadiers. Right. Uh, it's entirely probable that they're metal or cyocast resin because they, they had sculpts for those before and if they were coming out in hard plastic I feel they would have been in here. Mm. So what we've got here, I just brought one up to double check, is we've got hard plastic infantry and I think, yeah. They're the same. It's exact, it's, it is their standard hard plastic infantry sprue okay. which has got... Yeah. A whole bunch of dude bros. Which has got 28 guys, I think. Oh my. No, 24 guys. 24 guys on there. So two lots of those is, is 48. Um, I really like this infantry. I wish all of their infantry was like this. They're this quite dynamic. There's all the poses yeah. you'd ever want from your German infantry. Absolutely. Including the throw the tater masher. Bear in mind that the biggest base holds about six models in this game. Mm. So in terms of number of poses, you really don't, you know, th there's, I think there's 24 unique poses here. Uh, they, it's looking like it. be one or two. No, I think they are all unique. You know, that, and, that, and that's just fantastic. That's good. Not that you can really see. So, um, to make the force that you've given you, and this is again, I'm really pleased about this, is to make this force here, you've not got any Zookas on here. So you to make six four-man teams, that's 24 models. Oh, look at that. And you've got two. 24 models, yeah. Ish. You need to make a HQ guy and some Zooka guys, but they also give you... Do you get some extra... I thought I'd seen one. Yep, yeah, you get... Th they make a little command sprue. Which has got, That's got a, a Zooka on it, on it and some HQ guys. Perfect. So this, you only need one, yeah, let's say Zooka, Panzer Shrek. One Panzer Shrek and one HQ team. So actually... You can double, right? They're giving you a whole extra sprue of infantry than, than they needed to. Now often they give you two sprues because you need slightly more. That may be that the balance of machine gunners on here is slightly below or above what they're... You know, you might not have quite right. enough riflemen or too many NCOs or yeah. something like that. And Because they they have basing conventions for their infantry, which, again, if you check the spotlight on their website, it'll show you. And it very much is like that blue is NCO, 
what you put one on one base yes. and, and so forth. Uh, you do what you like. They're actually their fighting statistics. They used to run a system cool, where man. they were separate. So you'd have in a German platoon, you'd have one base with the NCO and an LMG and another base which was just riflemen. Mm. And they'd have differentiated stats. Oh wow. So now they've blended it all. So if I look at the Panzer Grenadier now, yeah, rocking. they just call it Rifle MG or MG42 team, um, rather than giving you two different numbers. Yeah. Um, but they still recommend that you model them that way. Why? Who knows? Because that's what an actual... Two of those bases is a squad. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. But the, but now they've just blended the stats together for the squad. So yeah, John's showing you there some of mine. Here's the on. spring slash summer. The spring slash summer version. Yeah, but these are these are the same models. I can't get very good focus, guys. Sorry, but yeah, you get the gist. They're lovely. Right. Um, so MG42 team, 16 inches range, three halted, two moving, um, and it also can have Panzerfaust anti-tank. Now there's a new rule on here. Which is limited to, so a Panzerfaust, you could only shoot one for the whole squad, but now you can shoot two. Two? Not for the whole squad, for the whole unit. If you paid for the Panzerfaust upgrade, yeah, that meant you could pick a base and shoot a Panzerfaust with it. Okay. Now you do it twice. Same, but with two dudes. With two dudes from the same squad. And that's just to in, in, account for the increased number yeah. of Panzerfaust. I mean, they made millions, literally. And that's not hyperbole. They made literally millions of them because they were cheap to make and easy yeah, to use. Just a tube with a and you know they did a lot different. of enemy tanks to deal with. Um, but yeah, this is still even for the late war. This is still good infantry. Um, because these are Panzer Grenadiers. These are not the infantry formations that are fighting alongside the tanks and um, the other divisions part of the same offensive, which were Volks Grenadier, which is a very different thing altogether. Uh -huh. These are the integral infantry that are part of those divisions, and in particular, the ones in the half tracks. They're from the first battalion of the of right. the infantry regiment. These are the best of the infantry that they have. And their stats still reflect it. Even for winter 1944, they're still careful with the three-up save. They've still got a last stand of three, and they're still veterans. Wow. As you go down the batting order in the late war German roster, you're going to start seeing the units a lot weaker than this. Um, but these are still keeping still that. Yeah, they're that, they're, that, they're that cadre. And this is why it's that kind of last throw of the dice, the part this of the This is bunch. it. We're not quite done with dudes. You get the ubiquitous command sprues. Marvellous. They tend to give you enough of these commander sprues, these heads, to put one in every vehicle. I mean, I don't know, I don't excessive, know who, but I don't know who it, does that. I mean, it's the option. But it, it, nice. that, that option is certainly there, yeah. Um, whereas uh, the last things, then, is you get these crew sprues. Have you seen one of these before, John? I feel like I might have. These are for... These have come the... with the... Um, two five zeros and two five ones. So we've got Terrible. four of these, which is nice. You've got three different sitting bros, um, a, a, a wavy hands officer, and a guy with a machine Over gun there. for for using, which will slot into the gun shield. Nice. And certainly, um, assuming that they've they've done their math right with the two five ones that I have, the. Um, not the two five ones, the two five zeros that I have made. Mm. This guy was the right height to do that, so I assume that's the same here. You know, when he put his feet on the deck, he should. He will shoulder. Yeah. He, he will put that kind of position. And again, you've got four of those, and I like that. I know not everybody models them because it's another painting proposition. It's extra paint. Not everybody wants to add it's all the nice crew figures though. in, but and well, it's just like starter kits are the kind of places where they take them out. Yeah, a lot. You not, don't not need this it. company. This I mean, like... companies in general, like decals and and things yeah. like this, are Here's often the commander figures. Ingredients. They're often missing because not everybody uses them, and it just keeps the cost down. Mm. Um, so we're still not done. How we're are we dudes. not done? How are we not done? Indeed, uh, we've got the last few resin bits. I've poured these out without without showing them to you. Oh, boo. So what these are is they're the crews for the for the Hornice and the. 
homo, yeah? Ah, yes. Do so, in the back. So I've said, I've said this before about this Sinocast stuff. Yeah. It's some of the early examples of it. The details were a bit smooth. The, the, the quality was uncertain. But with these newer ones, they're nice. These you think are they're finally, nice. they're getting there. Yeah, yeah. I really like the detail on these. Are they better than the hard plastic ones? I think the detail is, but the clean up, there are problems with, the great thing about hard plastic is it's really easy to clean. Easy. You just scrape it with a blade and it works. With with these other materials, sometimes you have to cut and so forth, sometimes they get bent. But these these sculpts, the creases on the uniforms and so forth, they're really nice. They are crisp. Um, yes. Proportioned well as well for the sculpt. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you compare these to those um, Team Yankee Russians that we looked Massive at. Massive dudes, you mean, yeah. Yeah. The, the, these guys are, are much more lifelike. And they really need that. Your infantry is going to stand away from other models. Your vehicle crews are in the vehicles. They need to be at a comparable scale to the yeah. vehicles. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've got those. And this... Uh, Set so these guys on the strip. I've seen these before. These are for the Ostwind and the Verbalwind. Okay. Yeah. Um, and each of these are. Uh, I think each of these is actually a little bit different. They're the hands all are just different. The hands are all. I mean, they're Slightly all just. Different. They're all just chests and heads sticking out of the top of a top of a turret. But their hands are all in slightly different positions. Some of them yeah. are even yelling. You got a dude on the far right. He's like. Whoa! Oh, come on, boys! Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, so they're in, in this in this new Sario cast stuff. If you're not used it before, it's going to feel weird when you get it. It feels chalky. It, it doesn't. There's nothing yeah. on my hands no, no, no. from handling it. I have painted some of this stuff. It is okay. Like other resin type stuff, it's worth giving it a wash first, um, just to make sure that when you spray it. Yeah. But that's more of a of a um, good practice. Than anything else, you're, yeah. You're, you're just in really, case, any releasing agent. you know, they, they were just so um, pampered by it's having just... hard plastic for such a uh, so much of our stuff. We're just used to it, you know. You sp as long as you spray it with a primer, it'll be all right. It just freaks me out still the the flexibility yeah. in some of these. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to push it too far, but yeah. Yeah, don't push it too far. No. No. That'd no, be great. <laughs> We've had that experience previously. Cool, man. Right. So that was it. Oh, sorry. You also get bases. Get the bases. I think I mentioned that. So, as I said, 19 vehicles. There's actually two platoons of infantry in here. Yeah, you can most probably wrangle it. But as you say, how much is the redundancy of Yeah, thing? yeah. Depending on how authentic you want to be to the actual yeah. kind of um, paper organisation of these units. But certainly... Um, nice little bonus. Nice, li nice little Brucey bonus. So, 19, was it 19 vehicles, two sprues of infantry, but all the, all the other gobbins besides rule book. I, I think this is a 10 out of 10, John. You're going full 10 out of 10, mate. Well, I don't... I don't, I don't do the numbers. No, but because I'm, I'm I don't... I'm confident if you're saying 10 I don't out know 10. what it's missing. Um, I don't look at this and think... It's the, it doesn't have this. It's got artillery, it's got infantry, it's got tanks, it's even got anti-aircraft fire. Most of the units are integral to the formation. Yes. The, Ost, the Ostwind the, and the, the three different tank units. Wow. A couple of supports. It's got recon. It's got all the components. All the elements and ingredients All the elements to the need. game. Um, is it an easy army to use? I would say probably not. Elite armies are often very tough. Mm. But you know what is really forgiving? A platoon of infantry. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. You really, you really can't go wrong. And if you yeah. have two of them... Yeah, well, I think you could build just a regular one. You know, if you get the unit card... Bog standard. You yeah. just have another bog standard infantry platoon. Happy days. But, um, yeah, you know, these these things, they're, they're not cheap at £80, but they're, they're all right when the quantity is good. And I think anything that's kind of 17 plus vehicles yeah. and some infantry seems to me it's, it's you're paying four pounds per brew. I think that's all right. Yeah, that's right. Especially if you can use it all. And the mixture is always good because it's it keeps you most of it's useful. Well, most of it's useful to somebody. Yeah, it's, it's and most people can look at this and say, "Yeah, I've got a use for that." Sweet. All right. And what about you, Jim? Oh, I don't do marks out of ten, as you it were. Out of 10. Um, eighty quid. I don't know if that's that expensive. Really, when you no. compare it to other manufacturers and small armies and boxes, 
and others, yeah, not yeah. just I mean, the bar actually are £100 each. Exactly. Year. So I don't think you, you know, yeah. and it's the best yeah. part of 100 points. Yes. Which yeah. is pretty much straight to pretty the table much, gaming. Much. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And it, you, you you never, with any of these boxes, I never open the box and again, there's not enough plastic in here for my money. Yeah, yeah. Never felt there's that. There's plenty in there. Yeah, it's all good, man. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Hello. If you're enjoying our Flames of War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies, why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk. Thank you. How can there be? I like that you could.